Hello fellow problem solvers. So today I'm going to be doing a problem from Engel's Problem Solving Strategies, Chapter 1 on invariance, example number 5. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 10 minutes, ideally half an hour, but not more than an hour and a half. If, on the other hand, you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you take a preliminary look, put your first ideas out on paper for the next 5 to 10 minutes. So now, let's begin. So, let's repeat what invariance is, the principle of invariance. If there is a change, look for things which stay the same, or, this is like the extra sort of like more advanced version of invariance is monovariance or things that increase or decrease controllably. And now what is the problem? So we have like all of these numbers, A, B, C, D are not all equal. And at every time we get from A, B, C, D to A minus B, B minus C, C minus D and D minus A, i.e. this sort of thing. If, if we call this like sequences of A and B and C and D N that satisfy this with an initial like a0, b0, c0, and d0 not all equal, then we must prove that for every n there exists like an e that's one of these and a t such that e t is greater than n. Now what stays the same? What changes controllably? Well if you look at like I invite you to take first and foremost take about let's say five to ten minutes and find what stays the same if anything. And what stays the same is that the sum after the initial ones, what is a minus b, b minus c, c minus d, d minus a. So the sum a n plus b n plus c n, actually let's do a n plus one, b n plus one, c n plus one plus d n plus one is equal to what? It's equal to a n minus b n plus b n minus c n plus c n minus d n plus d n minus a n. And this is all equal to zero. So this means that the sum a n plus b n plus c n plus d n is equal to zero for like if we call the initial ones a zero b zero c zero d zero for all n greater than or equal to one. Now, how do we prove that one of them become, can, will become eventually arbitrarily large? Now, I would invite you here to pause for 10 to 20 minutes and try to find a monovariant that can maybe show this to you but also I will give you a hint here's the thing with the with the sum equaling zero we don't know if each of these is like one minus one one minus one like very small numbers or if they are like a thousand minus nine hundred minus fifty and minus minus fifty again actually so we need something that justifies that sort of tells us how big all of these numbers are and maybe the first sort of idea is that absolute values. But with absolute values, you have a little bit of a problem that is you have cases that may may or may not be difficult to work with. But is there a different way than looking at the absolute value of all of these numbers? Is there something else you can look at another type of sum? And here I invite you to pause for five, 10 minutes and try to find another sort of monovariant. And here's that idea. So instead of absolute values, to look at size, we can look at the squares, the sum of these numbers is squares. And we need to show that this sort of sum of squares, if we show that it always increases, then what we are showing is that because it's always increasing, then at least one of these numbers must be arbitrarily large. And we can show that. And I invite you to pause for five minutes and try to prove this. And here's the proof. So this is the algebraic manipulation, right? Dn is negative a n, negative b n, negative c n. And then what you get from here, you get this, you get this is all true if and only if. These are all if and only if statements, if and only if this is true, with the final thing being true if and only if. Which implies this, which is true, because if all of these were zero, that would imply a n, b n, c n, d n were all equal to zero, which would imply that the previous ones were equal and then equal to zero due to their sum being zero. Which would finally imply just going backwards, a0 is equal to b0 is equal to c0 is equal to d0, which is a contradiction by the problem statement. And now with this, I invite you to take 5 to 10 minutes and formally prove that one of these numbers will eventually become arbitrarily large. So here's the next step. Namely, now you know that we know that a0 squared plus b0 squared plus c0 squared plus d0 squared is greater than or equal to 1, but let's just make it strictly greater than 0. And so we know also know that a n plus 1 squared plus b n plus 1 squared plus c n plus 1 squared plus d n plus 1 squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to a, actually no, this, 
minus 1 actually, an squared plus bn squared plus cn squared plus dn squared plus 1. Because we're in the natural number, actually not natural numbers, but the positive integers because of these squares. But we're in the integers, so we can add a 1 here. And with these two things, we know that at squared plus bt squared plus c t squared plus dt squared is going to be strictly greater than t. And now with this, let's take a specific t. And if you haven't come this far, I actually invite you to take another three to five minutes and be careful and try to prove the claim of the problem. Here's the next step. So from the sum of squares greater than t, we have that the four times the biggest one of these squares is greater than t, which means that the biggest one is greater than t over four, which means that the absolute value of the biggest one is greater than the square root of t over two. Now, if, if the absolute value of the max is equal to that number, i.e. if the number is positive, we are done. If it's negative, we have another case that we need to take care of. And how we do that, we say if max of at, bt, ct, and uh, dt, if this is equal to the max of at, bt, and ct, and dt, that implies then we are done. However, if on the other hand, the max of this isn't the, the one of the max, then let's assume without loss of generality, let the negative, let at be less than zero and the max of all of these numbers be equal to at. Then what we have is from dt plus ct plus bt is equal to negative at, which now we know because this negative is the absolute value, we know this negative thing is greater than the square root of t over two. And now we know that the biggest one of these is what? Well, we know that three times that biggest one of b, t, c, t, d, t is going to be greater than the square root of t over two, which means that the maximum among b, t, c, t, d, t is going to be greater than the square root of t over six. And now, no matter the n, so now we just need to pick, say, now if we say that let t be equal to what we need, we need n squared times 6, I believe, 6, oh, times 36 to make sure this is the case. Then in, if, the, if the first case is true, if the largest one of these is a positive number itself, we are done because then we have that number, then we have a t is greater than what? We would have that a t is greater than the square root of t over 2, which is 36, 6 n, greater than 3 n. And in the second case, we would have that the maximum of b t c t d t is greater than the square root of this, greater than n. So at the end, at least one of these numbers will become arbitrarily large. Now this here solves our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.